looking at the circuits for arithmetic operations, we first consider the adders which are the most fundamental arithmetic operation uh, which are the most fundamental arithmetic operations and we also talked about speeding up of adders. One example we took was the carry look ahead. Then we talked about subtractors and subtraction being a complement addition was uh, taken into account while designing subtractors. And then the most widely used uh, next uh, most widely used operation in the arithmetic uh, arithmetic um, computations is multiplication. So, we like to see multipliers. Of course, there are some different types of multipliers depending on the speed and hardware. It is always the trade off more hardware faster multiplication is possible, but you need to spend more money. If you want to go for a smaller circuit with less hardware, then it will take more time. Basically, the multiplication we understand uh, as we understand from our paper and pencil method is to do this if, uh, shift and add that is we take the two operands one is called the multiplicand the other is called the multiplier each digit of the multiplier in case in case of decimal numbers each digit of the multiplier is multiplied with the multiplicand you write the result which will call partial product then we take the second digit of the multiplier and multiply again with the same multiplicand write it down from the first product partial product, but in this when we do that we do the shifting because we have taken the second position of the multiplier while we write the partial product we write it with a left shift shift of one digit position to the left. We continue to do that till we exhaust all the digits of the multiplier finally, we add the whole thing to get the final product. This is an algorithm which are used to which are familiar with in our hand computations it is called the shift and add algorithm because we have to add it after shifting it. All the partial products are added together to get the final product, but before doing so we have to shift each of the partial product each of the partial products to one bit position to the left. Of course, the other method of doing it would be to multiply the multi add the multiplicand multiplier times. That is, if you want to multiply a number n by another number m, I can add n m times, then also I can depart. That is a very slow process, I need to do n additions. So, shift and add is by far considered to be uh, much faster and more efficient method of multiplication, which has been used in computers. But as we go for higher and higher speed, whether the shifting has been done one at a time or all at the same time, because suppose we have only one adder. So, we can get one parcel product, keep it in a register or keep it in a storage, then get the second parcel product, shift it and add it using one adder, then that result I will keep in a storage, then get the second parcel product, the third parcel product, again add it to the same adder. So, with one adder I can in theory I can accomplish the shift and add algorithm, if you have enough storage facility to store the multiplier, multiplicand and the partial results. I can accomplish the whole multiplication in a series of additions one after the other. On the other hand, if I have a series of adders, if all the partial products can be added at the same time, I can get the result much faster because all adders can be added, all the partial products can be added at the same time. So, one is a serial operation one after the other, partial products are added one at a time till we complete the process of partial product addition. The other is to have all the partial products feeding onto the adders at the same time and then getting the sum in one, one stroke. Such multipliers are again as I said expensive in terms of hardware, but faster. So, it is always the it is always the, the conflict 
between the hardware you want to spend, you want to use and the time you want to allow. Of course, this is only a simple scheme, there are other schemes in which you can even make these things faster. For example, shift and add can be made slightly faster by some innovation. Similarly, this all parallel, all add at the same time, that can also be speeded up by some innovation. So, speeding up like this carry look ahead from the straight adder to the carry look ahead adder and many other adder schemes which are faster. We can also have multiplier schemes which are faster than the basic things. In basic thing though, there are only three things we can recognize. One is the repeated addition which is inefficient. We have the shift and add with a set of adders, we repeatedly do it or a shift and add in which we'll have, we use several adders working all at the same time. These are the three schemes. Within each one, we can speed up using many techniques which we are not going to get into in this course. So, what we will do today is to look at a circuit which will do the shift and add all at once. Such an adder a multiplier is called a array multiplier or a parallel multiplier. Why is it called an array multiplier? Because it reads an array of adders. Array is a lot of elements. So, we will see when you look at the circuit diagram, you will know why it is called an array multiplier. Array multiplier. Even array multiplier uses only shift and add algorithm. That means, I have to I have to have the numbers put in the proper position with appropriate shifting in order to get the final result which is correct. Let us take a simple example of two 4 bit numbers. I will let us say I want to multiply two numbers A and B each 4 bits A 3, A 2, A 1, A 0 is my first number B 3, B 2, B 1, B 0 is my second number. I multiply all, all A's and all B's are either 1 or 0, right? These are binary numbers. So, A's and B's can only take values of 0 and 1. So, first I have to multiply the, in a traditional multiplier, paper and pencil multiplier, the shift and add multiplication. What do you do? You take the first digit of the multiplicand, multipli this is called the multiplicand, this is called multiplier, I think you know that. Multiplicand multiplier, multiplier. You take one digit in the decimal system, you take one digit of the multiplier and multiply it with the multiplicand and write the result, which is I call a partial product. Because it is not a complete product, I will call it partial product or intermediate product. Then I take the second position of the digit of the multiplier, again multiply it this by the same number and write the partial result, but with a shift. Keep on doing it till I have exhausted all the bits, all the digits of the multiplier and I have this partial product with proper shifting, then add column by column. This is, why, this is how we do it. Now, we will do exactly the same way here, except this multiplications are only 1 bit multiplications. Now, so if I multiply this by B 0, this will be A 3 B 0, A 2 B 0, A 1 B 0, A, A 0 B 0. That is the first partial product, first partial product. Second partial product will be obtained by multiplying B 1 by, by uh, multiplying A by again B 1, which will be a 3 B 1, A 2 B 1, A 1 B 1, A 0 B 1. Same thing except that I have to shift it correspond to this position of second bit position of the B 1. I need to shift the, the partial product when I write it down. Third is I am going to multiply the same A 3, A 2, A 1, A 0 by B 2. I will shift it again A 3, B 2, A 2. B 2, A 1, B 2, A 0, B 2, 
and finally oh, I'm sorry this should be B3 A3 B3 A2 B3 A1 B3 A0 B3 add them all up so this will result in one number and then I will just this is same as a 0 b 0 and then this will be added I will write the result here this also can have a carry because this is a one this is a bit this is a bit a 0 b 0 can be 1 or 0 again each partial each product a 0 b 0 a and a i b j is a bit 0 or a 1. So, it can be either 0 or 1 if both are 1 there will be a carry right. So, I need to put the result and take the carry into this add these 3 then take the carry here put the result here 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 and I may get one more carry finally because this one bit the carry of this will go into this that can itself generate a carry. So, how many bits will be there in the product 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 there can be an 8th bit because there can be a carry here. So, we have 2 4 bit numbers the result is can be up to 8 bits not necessarily 8 bits can be depending on the numbers depending on the magnitude of numbers the number will be having fewer bits can have fewer bits, but the maximum number of bits you can have is 8 bits. So, we will call this P 0 product bit 1 product bit P 3 P 4 P 5 P 6 P 7 this is P 2 is P 3 P 4 P 5 P 6 P 7. So, 8 bits P 0 to P 7 a maximum of 8 bits can be there. First thing you should know about the multiplication is when you add when you multiply 2 numbers the total number of bits that are resulting is the sum of the number of bits in the 2 operands. The operand the one operand is called multiply the other operand is called multipli multiplicand the sum total of the number of bits in these 2 numbers will be the maximum number of bits you can have in the product. In the case of addition we saw that when you add 2 numbers with the same number of bits the result can exceed by 1 bit here it can it is a sum of these 2. Now, the question is multiplication is very simple as I said I have depending on I have to add a 3 b 0 a 2 b 0 a 1 b 0 a 0 b 0 with a 3 b 1 a 2 b 1 a 1 b 1 a 0 b 1 b 0 at the first step if I have a 4 bit adder with an appropriate shifting of the bit positions I can carry out this first partial product summation. Then I can use the same 4 bit adder and shift the results appropriately to get the sum of these 2 whatever I got as the sum of this can be added to this I can repeat it. So, I can do repeated additions using the same adder where I will take one row of the partial product and another row of partial product first complete the addition take the result feed it as the input take the one more row of the partial product add them get the result put it as the input take the one more one more row of the take one more row of the partial product and complete the addition. This is the algorithm both techniques are shift and add shift and add with one multiplier one adder not a single bit adder there should be as many bits I need to add 4 bits right. So, I need to have a multiplier adder which is 4 bit adder. On the other hand I can have a, at the same time I can add these 2 numbers the result of this can flow into this the result can can flow into this I can have many adders. So, that I can complete additions as fast as possible this second version is called the array multiplier because I need an array of adders rather than a single adder I need an array of adders this is called array multiplier that is most widely used multiplier today when the cost of these devices as technology has improved earlier on we used to do this shift and add 
in fact it was so expensive they used to take one single bit adder do the first shift first bit addition and then the second bit addition then the third bit addition and complete the one row go to the next row that is called bit serial bit serial addition is bit by bit serial you will add then you go to this second stage where I have a parallel multi a parallel adder with 4 bits or 6 bits or 8 bits or whatever is the number of bits I need to complete my partial product addition of one row to another row. I will take row by row. So, row serial instead of bit serial I will have a row serial shift and add algorithm a shift and add hardware, but now I do not even have to do that because the technology has become so inexpensive cost of uh, these things are not at all concerned today the size is not a concern power dissipation not a concern we are able to have large ICs integrated circuits in which all of these things are packed. So, in that case why do you have to do all this one by one and delay the whole process if you have when it is a resources. So, question of resources if we have enough resources to commit to my project I can get it done as fast as possible of course, under certain constraints assuming that all of them can be done parallelly. I cannot commit a lot of resources and do a project fast if my project implementation is a serial sequential first step has to be completed before the second step can be taken up. If that is the requirement of my project I cannot do it even though I have lot of resources. In this case we are assuming that all these additions can be carried out at the same time if we have enough number of adders. I can feed all these partial products or partial this product terms which are called product terms each individual term I will call a product term a 0 b 0 a 1 b 0 a 2 b 0 a 3 b 0 each one of them is a product term I will feed all these product terms with the appropriate position with appropriate shifting in my adder array that is why it is called array multiplier array of adders and get the result as fast as possible such an adder is called an array uh, multiplier is called an array multiplier. But how are you going to get a 0 b 0 is an AND gate you know when you have two numbers 0 and 1 multiplied by another number is also 0 and 1 the only case the result will be 1 is when both are 1 all other cases the result is a 0 is it not the same as the AND operation I have a and b a i and b j my individual product term <coughs> a i bj will give me a i bj if both are 0 or one of them is 0 the output is 0 if both are 1 the output is 1. So, each of these product terms can be generated using an AND gate. So, first resource I need to commit for my multiplier is as many AND gates as there are how many? I need to generate a i and b j for each i i is equal to 0 to 3 j is equal to 0 to 3. So, 4 times 4 16 product terms I need to generate. So, I need to have 16 and gates. So, my assuming I have 16 and gates in which I will appropriately feed a 0 a 1 a 2 a 3 and b 0 b 1 b 2 b 3 proper combinations. I will get a i b j where i can vary from 0 to 3 and j can vary from 0 to 3. So, in other words I can go have from a 0 to a 0 b 0 to a 3 b 3 all the 16 terms are available to me at one stroke. With that assumption I will go and show you how to do the addition process this is the circuit for which you will do this. This is the circuit of the array multiplier I have already assumed that all these product terms are available to you using AND gates all it needs. So, if you want to just show this in one one case you can show this. I did not want to clutter this drawing with all these AND gates in each of these. So, I just put an arrow with this product term you have to assume that each of this product term is coming from a from an AND gate like this. So, this AND gate will give you a 0 b 0 and 
this A0, B0 does not require any more additions. The last row, the least significant column, the least significant column, this becomes the partial product P0, not this partial product. This the first bit of the product term. First bit of the product term P0 is nothing but the A0, B0. So, that is why I said A0, B0 is nothing but P0 here. If we take the second column, I need to add A1, B0 to A0, B0. A0, B0 and A1, B0 have to be added. Okay, A0, B1. A1, B0 and A0, B1. A1, B0, A0, B1 have to be added. These two product terms are available to me. I put it in adder and get the result. This adder needs to be a half adder because I have only two terms, no carry, two inputs, no carry, so I need a half adder. The sum goes to P1, the carry is passed on to the, see the carry from this, this column has to go to the next column, remember that. When I add the partial products of this column, to get the product term correspond to this column, the carry from here should go into the, the next column. So, my carry has to travel to the next bit position horizontally, my carry has to travel to the next bit position horizontally. So, this is the carry of this adder, this is the half adder I put with the h symbol h for half adder and this is sum. In the third column, I will have to first add A2 B0 to A1 B2, A1 B1 along with the carry from the previous column and then to that sum I should add A0 B1. Take it as my P2 term, the product term bit number P2, P2 bit of the product, total product. And if there is any carry resulting from that, I need to go to the next stage. So, there may be a carry resulting from here, there may be a carry resulting from here. So, since they are doing two additions, two carries can be generated. Each of these carries have to go to the next column. The carry is always one weight higher bit position wise, one higher hierarchy. So, the carry from here into to go to here, carry from this has to go into this. So, that is why I am having here A1, B1. A2 B0 adding to the carry of the previous, the sum goes into this to add the complete the partial product, complete the product term P2, I need to add A0 B2 further, but the carry has to go to the next bit position. So, this is my carry, this is my sum, and with this sum I add A0 B2 to get the sum which is my P2 and this carry into this. So, the carries have to go into the next positions, some have to go, some has to travel vertically, carries have to travel horizontally. Do you understand this? That is all. Now, I do not have to keep on explaining all these terms. You take each row, each column take two terms at a time, if there has been a carry from the previous position, put it on the top of it, add it, get a sum, if that is the last addition, take it as the particular bit of the product, if it is not the last addition, go to the next term in the same column, keep on adding sum, sum, sum in all those columns have added one after the other and any carry generated has to be pushed into the next bit position whatever is the stage. So, A0 B1, A2 B0 added to this previous carry gets a sum and this carry to this sum I add A0 B2 to get the product bit P2. This carry goes into this, I am having A2 B1, A3 B0 into this carry, carry also taken into account provides another carry which has to go into the next bit position. A1, B2, this sum, 
this will give me along with this carry make sure that you never have more than 3 inputs to the adder because you can have 2 inputs is called half adder 3 inputs it becomes a full adder you cannot have more than 3. So, this is a half adder because I have the sum from here and this new term sum from here new term this is a half adder this is a half adder all these are half adders this has to be a full adder because I need a carry in these two terms carry out and sum a full adder will have a carry in two bits as inputs carry out sum as the output. So, this is a full adder so full adder full adder full adder So, carry from here is pushed into this next column a 3 b 1 is the first value in this column a 3 b 1. You draw it this way it is convenient I could have always pushed this full adder here because this carry is coming a new term, but then if you do not keep that symmetry of the drawing it is very difficult to understand what is happening. So, it is better to map your drawing the hardware the circuit or the schematic the exactly the same way as the bits appear in your multiplication. So, this multiplication can be taken as a reference for drawing this that is why otherwise I could have pushed it here it is not going to harm me because the carry anyway will be there the new term will be there and then I can push it done then I then it becomes sort of confusing after some time. And it, it is asymmetric as something else and this is, is also better to look look at this way you know when it is symmetrical. So, this goes here this carry goes here. So, this is a full adder it pushed to the next stage. So, this addition process the carry will go into this a 3 b 2 will be added to this carry and this carry and then this will continue and then the finally, this will be the the last adding addition of these two terms that will go into this. So, this will be the last adder where a 3 b 3 will be put along with the carry from the previous position and this may generate a carry because there is a bit here a bit here and a bit here is a full adder. So, there is there may be a carry here. So, you have to put one extra carry. So, this is the sum of the last full adder and carry of the last full adder. So, in this notation is h is half adder f is full adder s is sum c is carry. This is this multiplier is called array multiplier this is most elementary form of array multiplier we can make changes in this the speeding up is possible. Also we are not talking about sign the numbers if the numbers are should the numbers be all uh, unsigned numbers or signed numbers if it is signed numbers are represent a two's complement how is it going to handle up because when you multiply two numbers the product the sum of the product depends on the signs of the individual numbers right if one of the numbers is negative the product is negative if both the numbers are positive or both the numbers are negative sum is I mean product is positive is it not product sign of the product is positive if both numbers have same sign if the numbers have different signs up then the product will be negative. So, all these things will be taken into account. So, I am not getting into all those details. So, this can be improved further for speeding up can be improved for handling signed numbers and unsigned number for sign number this unsigned number for sign numbers and I can do it for 8 bits 16 bits whatever you want. So, in general now I have used I have used 4 by 4 multiplier this is called 4 by 4 array multiplier 
This is the name. What are the what is the hardware required? Sixteen AND gates. How many adders totally? Four, four times three, twelve adders. Out of which, four are half adders, eight are full adders. Four half adders, eight full adders. Total of twelve adders. So, you want to generalize this, if you want to call it m by n, m is the number of bits in the multiplicand and n is the number of bits in the multiplier. First number is called multiplicand, the second number is called multiplier. In this case, b is n, n is 4 for b, n is the number of bits. For b it is 4, a is also it is 4. So, here in this case, m is 4, n is 4. But what I mean by m is? number of bits of A, number of bits of B is called N. It is only a notation, you can do it the other way also or you can use it P Q X Y, I am just to keep the notation straight. So, if you want to generalize that, there are M times N and gates. There is a half adder in each row, one half adder in each row, the each row corresponds to the multiplier bit, you know, each multiplier bit gives rise to a product row, you know, each multiplier bit gives you gives rise to a partial product row. So, half adder is the sum of the half adder is same as the number of bits in the multiplier, right. So, n is the number of half adders. What is the total number of adders? N rows, but each row we, since we are going to have only one less adder <coughs> because of this. First, we have taken this into account. One bit, one less adder in each row, one less than the number of bits. So there are n bits, there are only n minus one adders in each row, but there are m rows. So the total number of adders is m into n minus one. So, out of which, oh, number of, I am sorry, n is the number of half adders, m is the number of, I, I use, that is okay as long as, that means it is m minus 1. I, I interchange here m and n, sorry about it. So, the remaining is full adder, that means total adders is m n minus n minus n. So, full adders is m n minus 2 n or m into n into m minus 2. number of is it not number of full adders is total number of adders minus number of half adders. Why? There is a problem here. This is m n minus 2 n plus n become m n minus n. Just to generalize this. So, so you have an idea. So, I can do an 8 by 8 multiply here. I can even make a m and n need not be same. Is it not? That is why I have given you as m and n, otherwise I would have put it n and n square and all that I would have given. So, I can have a different number of bits for the multiplier and for the multiplicand. So, if you know this type of idea of the products, the number of uh, hard, uh, number of uh, gates and number of hard uh, adders, half adders, full adders, 
have an estimate of the hardware. The beauty is the whole thing is available as a single chip, not even a 4 by 4, even bigger than that. And I, as I said, this speeding up extra circuitry for speeding up. As I said, speeding up always comes at the cost of something else, remember that. And also signing, signed numbers, two, two complement numbers. This is unsigned multiplication, signed multiplier with speed up, larger number of bits. This sensor available today, fortunately, is hardware, ICs, so you can just plug it in and use it. Just take it, plug it into your circuit and use the circuit for a multiplication purpose. Now, we are talking about this as a improvement, as an improvement from bit serial, forget about it, bit serial is old and days. That is, you take only one full, one bit full adder, give A0, B0, whatever, A0, B0 as, for example, you want to take one addition, let us take this addition, A1, B0, A0, B1, you put A0, B0, A1, B0, A0, B1 into the full adder, get the thing, sum and the carry, you should have some way of storing the carry till the new bits are put in the same full adder, because I have only one full adder, remember? To this full adder, I let it get these two numbers. I should have a way of keeping this carry till the time, uh, adding it at the right time, and also keeping the partial products in storage spaces and all that. It was necessary when adder, adders were expensive, but adders became very cheap when the integrated te circuit technology became so uh, easy to fabricate and so inexpensive. So, nobody talks of bit serial multiplier today, but the the debate was until recently, until recently the debate was between partial product one partial product at a time I have one multi bit adder, not a single bit adder as in the case of bit serial adder, one multi bit adder which will be repeatedly used for first adding this to this and then adding this to this and adding this to this and adding this to this. That is called as I said, uh, serial parallel, what is? row serial, right, row serial. Row serial was until recently being used because of the expensive nature of this array multipliers, because it requires, this is not, see again as I said in the classroom we can do a 4 by 4, in a textbook you will find 4 by 4. But you want to do a real job, 4 bits is only 16, 0 to 15 numbers. And out of the if you use signed arithmetic, it is plus or minus 7, if it is case of ordinary sign, sign magnitude representation, which get a 2's complement, it is minus 8 to plus 7. Such a small range, nobody units a multiplier, you can do it by mental sum by tables. So, we are talking of here 16 bit multipliers, 32 bit multipliers, 64 bit multipliers. So, it is all exponentially it grows you know the number of gates and full adders and all that. It becomes cost effective to do this, it will become because the speed has such become such a critical issue today. We are talking of computers which have to work in nanosecond clock cycles. So, naturally I need to have a hardware for multiplication it should be very very fast the only way to achieve is to have this all of them available at the same time so commit as much resource as possible to get the job done as quickly as possible having said that is it all that fast we will have to see because after all there are adders adders suffer from what carry propagation we saw it in adders carry propagation is a big issue. Here also there is a carry propagation. This carry has to go here and then trigger this. This sum will go. Of course, there is no worry because I do not, until I have P7, I cannot use this product. So, let me see how quickly can I get P7. I cannot use the full product until all the bits are in place. Is that right? So, even though it is some may take more time, once this carry is available here, this will be fired, this sum will go here, carry will go here, I will not worry about this path anymore, 
I'll worry about what happens with this carry. How fast can I get it here? Similarly, how fast can I get this carry here? 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 So, number of carries is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I call Tc as a carry time or carry propagation time, and Ts as some propagation time of a full adder, of an adder I will say, I will not worry about full adder or half adder. In fact, to be for symmetry sake, I always say have uniformity, do not worry about a few full uh, half adders and uh, if you are talking about 64 by 64 or something like that, you know talking of so many adders, a small number of them needs to be half adder, need not be taken into account. You can all have them all full adders with carry 0. That is not a big issue. So, we will not worry about propagation time separately. We will call it Tc is the carry propagation time and Ts is the sum propagation time of an adder, whether it is full adder or half adder, we will assume to be them to be the same. The, the speed would then be here, this is available after Tc, this is available Ts. So, this is available. This is available after T s, T s is some time, this is available instantly. I am not considering the add time. If you consider add time as an extra time, T a as the AND gate time. So, T a is common to all, all product terms are available after T a. So, I will not worry about it now, finally I can add this T a. Is it not? Finally, I can add my T A. So, I will not put T A plus T A plus another. Mm -hmm. So, this is immediately available after T A. This is T A plus T S. This will be T C plus 1 T S. 1 T C, 1 T S. Oh, T C plus 2 T S. This is 2 T C plus 3 T S because 1 T C, second T C. T s, T s, T s. This will be 3 T c plus 3 T s. This is 4 T c plus 2 T s. This is 5 T c plus 1 T s. and this is 6 T c. So, this term is available after 6 T c after the multiplication has started. This term is available 5 T c plus F T c T s after the multiplication has started etcetera etcetera. Usually T c is more than T s because is not first if, if you assume that of course, you can al always make an adder in which T c is faster than T s. So, if T c is, if T c is greater than T s, if T c is greater than T s, I will not worry about this T c's because I am only getting it 6 T c is the largest number of T c's. So, the propagation time is 6 T c, the add time, total add time is T a plus 6 T c and 6 is only a number for this particular combination. In general, it will be n minus 1 plus m minus 1, 1 less for n, 1 less for m. So, this will be r T a plus This is the time at which I will get the final result, it is not called total add time, multiplication time. Is this 
for this particular case or in general it is this. If on the other hand you have a circuit which is efficient because many times if you make a circuit T c is faster than T s y because T c has to carry on T s is only local. T s is a local phenomena some propagation is a local phenomena phenomenon carry propagation is a global phenomenon it has to go. So, because of that many times you want to optimize the circuit configuration such that T c becomes smaller than T s if that is the case what will happen if T c is less than T s then the propagation time will be T a plus 3 T c plus 3 T s or in general it is T a plus n minus 1 T s plus m minus 1 T c. same as this that is why I wrote both. So, this is also important T s even though this carry would have propagated I have to wait for this in 3 T c this is available after this 3 T c is common between these two this 6 T c this 3 T c, but after this pro time another 3 T c time this is available whereas another 3 T s time only this is available. Now, T s is larger than T c that means, this is going to be P 4 is going to be the last not P 6 earlier we said P 7 was the last to arrive. Now, because 3 T c is common between these two 3 T c after this this is available P 7 is slightly earlier available because T c is smaller than T s whereas, 3 T s is going to take a little more time. So, P 4 will be the last to arrive. So, I will have to take that into account again it will be n minus 1 n minus 1 formula. So, the why did I say all this about the speeds? I said I am committing a lot of hardware here instead of a row serial addition, I am having an array of instantaneous addition. I hope to achieve instantaneous moment the numbers a and b is uh, number a and number b are given, I want a product p which is a times b but of course, it is limited by hardware which is AND gates and uh, array of adders and we have to make sure that this faster than this. Of course, there are techniques to speed it up as I said I am not going to discuss those things in this class, but the point is you have to see whether the resources committed are able to get the what you want. If in spite of that you are not able to get this speeds that you are going to get, I do not want to use it. See before committing a lot of resource you have to make sure that you will get the job done in the time required. If you cannot still meet the deadline what is the point in committing lot of resource to that. So, I can think of another way of improving can I get some more resource and speed it up or reach a point no the technology cannot deliver what I want. So, I will go back and do the old way old fashioned way something like that. Okay, with this I will conclude the arithmetic circuits we talked about adders. Uh, sing half adder, full adder, multi bit adders, fast adders, carry look at adders an example only there are many other fast techniques which I have not considered in this class. We talked about subtractors and subtractor being two common adders. We talked about multipliers and different schemes and then one of them just tell you the flavor just to give you the flavor for multiplication hardware.
Thank you.